Hello there kittens. I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to my channel ASMR Kitty. So in today's ASMR video, I'm going to be eating some Sour Patch Watermelon and uh, candies. I haven't eaten these in years and years and years and years and years. So, I don't even remember the last time I've eaten these. Anyway, I have my water right here. I didn't used to have them here in Texas, but now they're starting to act up really bad. And it's so disappointing because I didn't used to have them and now I have them. And my voice changes and it gets like, you know. from the allergies though. So it's not smooth, you know. I have to constantly be coughing and editing it out of the video. <laughs> so there it is right here. It's a little watermelon. I thought they were little I thought they were like those little bears that you see on the commercials, but they're not. you guys today I'm in orange today so I was thinking about something to talk to you about and I thought of something so I don't know about you guys, but I learned my lesson a long time ago that the less you speak, peaceful life is. The more you talk, the more drama you have. I learned that lesson a long time ago. The reason I say that is because I was trying to think of a topic to talk about or even a story. I have lots of stories. And uh, I had one, and this is about a friend of mine, that uh, I have this friend, <laughs> I have this friend that we spent about two and a half years together. And volunteer work for the community it was basically like a job but with benefits because I had a friend because we did a lot of work and a lot of driving we spent a lot of time together so here I have this friend these are actually really good these are pretty good I don't want to eat them all so I mean like all in one sitting so like just because there's there's not very many in the bag see they, they give you like little a little bit so what I'll do is I'll take little bites so we 
spent a lot of time together. And, um, she became a very good friend to me, but I've known her for a long time. Anyhow, so, she was already a good friend, but then she became a great friend. Well, we hang around. I have a lot of friends. Just like you may have lots of friends. But there's some that are closer than others, right? Or some that you know more than others. You wouldn't really call them acquaintances because, you know, they come to your house, we hang out, you, you know their families and stuff like that. You know how they are. So you consider them a friend. Well, one day, I was talking to him. another friend of ours, a mutual friend of my close friend that I, spent, that I spent a lot of time with. Um, she was telling me on the phone that a mutual friend of ours, one that was getting married, has said some stuff about her. About my friend that that I hung around with all the time. I worked with her. And that she had said that um, she was she, she was going to be getting married. This other friend and uh, my friend Rhonda was planning a big party for her. My friend Rebecca had called me up. So my friend Rebecca, she's talking to me and telling me about this other girl, this other friend of ours. Rachel, and she's saying, yeah, she said she came over here and was saying some stuff about Rhonda, and I said, like what, and she said that Rhonda is pushing being in her wedding and stuff like that to be a bridesmaid, and I thought, because see, I knew that she was going to be a bridesmaid in the wedding, I was like, what's, the, what's the wrong with that, why is she no want her to be in the wedding? And she said, no. she said she don't like her. She said she's annoying. And I was like, uh. I didn't say much. I just said, that's not right. I said, Rhonda loves her. Rhonda loves Rachel. Like, I mean, like, she's as close to Rachel, probably closer and she is to me. I'm really sure I'm going to act that way. A lot of it I was thinking. I was telling my our friend Rebecca. I said, did you say anything? And she goes, I didn't say nothing. Good, I said. But she said this in front of another friend. So it's like a group of friends that are talking. One of them's talking about the other friend. Another friend of ours. They're all mutual. It's called drama. And they wanted to put. She wanted to put me in that drama. And I was just like. I don't know what to do. About that information. I was like. She said. I said are you sure. She said, Nikki, I know the, the difference between, between, um, you know, someone that is talking, like, you know what I mean, like, like, for instance, one time I was talking, and this is me, I'm talking, I'm saying this, one time I got upset, because I, I spent like three years with my friend, and when you're spending all day long with a friend, 
or with anybody, you're going to have spats sometimes. And one day, she does hair. She had her own salon and everything. She did my hair, and I didn't like the way she did it. And I ignored her for a little bit because I didn't want to get mad at her. Like, I get upset with her. That's the first time I'd ever done that to her. Or anybody, really. I got, I was really upset. I didn't know how to tell her. Look, I don't like the way you did my hair. So I actually called that same friend that called me. And I was telling her. Well, karma came to bite me in the butt. Because she was listening. I, I, I was texting her, that's right. And I accidentally texted Rhonda. The one that owns the hair salon, the one that's real close to me. I texted her and <laughs> when I was texting my friend Rebecca. And she said, oh, you don't want my hair cut? You don't like that? You don't, you don't like my prices and stuff? And I said, oh, no. So, be careful who, who you text and how you text and stuff like that. That's why I call people. Anyway. There's a difference between like being upset with somebody and releasing, you know, like being upset with the actions of a person, them directly like attacking a person's character or a person itself person, you know, him or herself, and that's what this other friend Rachel was doing with her friend Rhonda, is that she was saying that she don't like her, basically saying, I mean, like, just plain don't like her, and she never told her that, so, next couple of days go by, I didn't call my friend Rhonda. I ain't telling nothing. In fact, Rebecca says, don't go telling Rhonda. And I said, you know me. I don't tell nobody nothing. I'm like the black boy. I said, whatever you tell me goes into that void. Mm, never come out. <laughs> we were at a cafe right next to my home. Um... We were visiting, um, I mean, we were having coffee, and we were, we were visiting with each other that day. I remember it was pouring down rain. I, I do recall that. And we were dressed up because of the kind of volunteer work we did. We were dressed up for casual. But still dressy casual. Now, my friend Rhonda could be a model. And she's been asked to be a model before. Very beautiful. But so was Rachel. Rachel's very beautiful too, but no one's ever asked her to be a model. And my friend has been told by, my friend Rhonda has been, been actually so many times have been told by men and by children that she's beautiful. And she is beautiful inside and out. She doesn't carry that air of like arrogance just because she's that way. So now I'm going to chew some gum because I, that was it. They don't put a lot. They only put like I don't know, like, eight of them in there or something. So, I have some gum here, too, so. To make a long story short with this, we were sitting there. We were sitting there, drinking our coffee. And, uh, I just was thinking about what I had been told by our friend Rebecca about Rachel and there she goes I already knew about this but she had said it again she said because I had been I couldn't make this thing that she was making for Rachel 
she had made her a party, like a, a bridal shower, a little one just with us, just with the ones that knew her real well, including Rebecca, the one that was telling me this stuff, and uh, anyway, so I was sitting there talking with her, and uh, in my mind, I, I knew that, because she, she was talking on and on and on about Rachel, and how she was going to have that shower, or how how she wanted to have a shower, and I said, what are you talking about, because she was going to have a, 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 a bridal shower for her at her home, and I said, how did that go, I was supposed to go, but I went on vacation, with my husband, so I have to miss it, well, this is before I was told about this information, so, I was sitting there looking at my friend, Rhonda, and she was so happy and smiling, and her eyes were bright, and she was just talking about Rachel, and how excited she was about going, or about being a bridesmaid in her. And her wedding and all. And I was just, I was acting regular. I was behaving in a regular fashion. You would never know that I, I had this, this secret, this knowledge. I had a poker face. And I was just nodding at her and everything and I was telling myself, should I tell her? But then I thought about that. And all the, what would happen if I were to tell her about Rachel? This very friend that she's talking about right now. I bet she's so happy and excited for her and stuff. Even though she was even going to have a bridal shower and everything. She said that didn't pan through. It didn't happen. And then I was like, oh, sorry about that. She said it had been canceled, but not because of any other reasons, just that there was some issues with, you know, everybody getting together that day. I remember it was like a Saturday or something like that one. She said, you didn't miss anything because it never happened. I was like, oh. Um. But, um. I ended up saying to myself in my mind, as I watched her drink her coffee and I looked outside at the rain. And I looked outside at the rain pouring. And it was like a perfect, just a perfect morning. I didn't want to ruin that. Because I was thinking, what would happen if I were to tell her about Rachel? What would happen? She would get her, first of all, not only would she get her feelings hurt, but she'd be upset. And then she would ask me who said this. And then I would have to say Rebecca who told me not to say anything. And then she would probably call Rebecca. And then Rebecca would call me and get mad at me. And then she would call Rachel and get mad at Rachel. And Rachel in turn would get mad at Rebecca and me. I was like, I'm not going to deal with this at all. So guess what happened? Like Kermit the Frog, I just sipped my tea. I just sipped my, <laughs> my latte and just allowed things to happen. 
I said, I'm not going to be in the middle of this. I love my friend Rhonda. But I'm not going to tell her. Because I'm not going to hurt her. I'm not going to be that one to hurt her. I'm going to let things happen. What I'm trying to say here is this. I don't think it eventually ever happened because she went to Ecuador. My friend Rhonda lives, she went to, she lived in Tokyo, her and her husband. Then they moved to Ecuador and now they live in Ecuador. But she comes to visit her family sometimes. And I think what happened was that, I think Rachel's just jealous of her. But I don't know for sure because I don't live in the mind of other people, so I don't know. You know? I don't know people's real intentions for heart, their mind, so... Maybe she was having a bad day and she was mad at Rhonda. Who knows? Maybe she was jealous. My my gut feeling is that she's a little jealous of her. Who knows? I've never been jealous of my friend Rhonda, so... Anyway, she came, she came to visit, Rhonda did, her and her husband, back to the States. And uh, we met at a restaurant not too long ago. And lo and behold, Rachel's there. Now this is already like six years later. And Rachel's there. And we're at this Korean restaurant that they invited us to. And Rachel's there. And then Rhonda and Sean show up, her husband, uh, Rhonda, Rhonda's husband, and uh, we're all together there. And you know what, it didn't feel like anything, I didn't feel like awkward or anything about it, because I mean, it's been six years have gone by, and I thought if she hasn't said anything, and there wasn't any reconciliations because of, or repercussions of it, who am I to say anything now? Maybe Rachel grew up a little bit since then. I didn't say nothing. What I'm trying to say is this. If somebody tells you something, think before you react to it. Not that I didn't believe my friend Rebecca. I mean... It's just that I wasn't going to get in the middle of that, of that melee, mm -mm. I had to cause the melee, and I wasn't going to get in the middle of that one. Plus, peace is better than turmoil, right? So I wasn't about to cause and stir up problems. And I wasn't going to be the cause of that one, so I just let it stay stagnant. And see what happened. See who's going to be the one to stir that mess up. Nobody did. So I thought, well, that's good. That happened with another friend, too. I was on a trip with them. And, um... One of my friends, and she invited another, a younger friend with, with us, in her teens. And she was, she was like, on our way on this trip is like three hours long. And we were going to be staying at a hotel and stuff like that. It was for volunteer work as well. And, um, they were gabbing about people the whole time. And one in particular... A mutual friend, an older friend, much older. And she was saying some stuff about her being uncomfortable around this one friend of ours. And she thought that, you know, he was, because she was in her teens, she thought that he was, you know, had an eye for her. And he's married and stuff, and also he's much older. I could hear them gabbing. I just put my earbuds on and I just listened to my music. I didn't want to get involved. 
all the way up there to our destination they talked about this in my mind I had a lot going on in my mind I was thinking why are you hanging around them why don't you just tell your mom about it there were so many scenarios going in my head and I didn't say one word I listened to Alicia Keys and I just was like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to this on our way back this was like four days later we're heading back they finally asked me <laughs> my friend my friend Jerrica finally said what do you think about this Nikki I had to take my earbud out I was like what and she goes what do you think about this whole thing you haven't said one word about it I said I really don't know what to say I said I mean I had a lot of stuff I could say but I was like I don't know what to say I mean I'm just gonna say one thing I guess if somebody makes you uncomfortable don't hang around them and she said is that all you have to say about it and I said yep I said Terika if somebody makes you uncomfortable don't hang around them that was it um my friend Jerrica, she's known, I've known, I had known Terrica, who was the teenager, even before she was even Thunko, she was, that's how old I am, and I'm giving away my age, and then Jerrica, I've known since we were, like, since we were six years old, and this happened about six years ago, too, so, Then my friend Jerrica says, she told Terrica, Nikki ain't going to say nothing. She ain't going to say nothing because she's real diplomatic and she don't say nothing. That's smart. She goes, that's smart, Nikki. I know I know that you're smart like that. I said, it has nothing to do with being smart, Jerrica. It has all to do with just doing the right things, not getting yourself in trouble. Anybody could do this. I guess you could say it's a wise thing. I even had a doctor tell me that. He said, you're very diplomatic. Because he was asking some advice about a, a fellow employee. I wasn't about to be the one that got her fired or anything like that so I didn't see anything like her stealing anything or whatever I just real diplomatically said whatever your gut feeling tells you to do Dr. Maddox this is not my clinic serious I said so it's whatever you think my opinion really doesn't matter at all it's up to you so you can tell me a thousand things that she does but I'm not going to give you like my opinion on the matter only that this is your clinic and whatever your gut feeling says I said I should go with that feeling I said think more with your gut than with what you just with your mind because I said the mind can mess you up sometimes thinking too much about stuff I guess those are just some stories that I had to say basically what I'm trying to say is in a world full of like you know people that talk about people we have you know your people magazine that gossips and stuff TMZ I don't even watch or read that stuff I don't watch I don't watch TMZ or look at people magazine I don't care about what's going on in celebrity land I got my own problems 
to worry about. Be wise. Think about the repercussions. Let things don't be the waves, you know, of turbulence in, in a peaceful sea. Be the one that not preaching or nothing, but it's just wiser to be the one that's quiet. You don't get in trouble that way. Don't think about it. How are you gonna get in trouble by being quiet? finish these I was going to show y'all something real quick so I ordered something I ordered something um, the other day I'm always ordering something right And um, I'm waiting for them to come. Order this. I don't know if you can see that very well. Maybe I have to turn up the color. Sometimes the color. Can y'all see that? I have to adjust the colors just right. So, um, I ordered this. I don't know if you can see it very well, but they're pastel pencils. So they're like pencils, but they're pastel. I got 84 of them. And they're, um, I don't know how to say this, Caron de Arch, Classic Neo Color 2 Water soluble wax oil pastels neo color so I got that they were having a deal it's crazy though because like it's so crazy They had those on sale on this website called Blick Art. I'd never heard of that. I usually go to uh, Jerry's Autorama here in Austin. I realized I was getting gypped from them because I always thought that their stuff was, their prices were cheaper, but apparently this Blick place is even cheaper than them. And it's an art supply store, but. They have an online store as well. So, basically, at Jerry's Art Rama, where I'd go, it's like $350 to buy that. I got it for $137. Um, but the funny thing is this. For like a hundred dollars, a hundred and I don't know, some odd dollars more. So like for two hundred and fifty seven dollars you can get it for the same pencils and all that in a wooden box. And I was like, Ooh, you know. But for one thirty seven you can get the same thing in a tin. Tin box. 
And I was like, which one am I going to get at sea? I wasn't going to get something and pay extra just because it's in a box, in a wooden box. So I ended up getting another one. But I was feeling really, really gypped by Jerry's the place that I go to because they sell it for, I think they sell it for $250, not $350. And I was like, it's on sale over here though for $137, why? I looked everywhere to see if it was cheaper. There was nothing cheaper than that. Even Amazon had it more. So I'm going to be getting those. I draw. I paint. I do all that stuff, so. When I saw that, I have four pencils. And they help me. I use them all the time when I'm drawing. And I want to up my art. I've been trying to up my art better. And in order to have better art, you have to buy the best that you can, that you can afford. It is what it is. So, I bought those. So that way when I create art, I can make the best that I can with what I got. And what I can afford right now. But I was glad to get it in a deal. I always search for deals. I'm just kind of rambling. Talking about things, you know. Letting you know a little bit of my life. One day I'll do a Q and A. I know this wasn't like a total whisper, it's more like soft talking, but I hope you um enjoyed it. Little sounds and just relaxing. You know, think positive thoughts. I've I met so many of you guys on here that are going through every are going through real tough times and I don't know one person that ain't going through something. I'm not saying that their lives are, they trumps your, you know, what you're going through. Just like a friend of mine that had cancer told me one time, because I said, I told her, forget my problems. I told her, you have it much worse than me. And she said, Nikki, she grabbed me by my shoulders. And she said, just because I'm dying of cancer. And I said, don't say that. She goes, it is what it is. Just because I'm dying of cancer doesn't make your problems any less, you know, important or or less, uh, what's the word, what's the word she used, important in your life because, you know, you're the one that's going through your problems. And they mess you up. They make you feel horrible. They don't give you the best quality of life. So. Or the best, you know, that you can live. Because you're going through your own problems. You're the one that has to deal with them. Everybody deals with things. Personally. And affects them. That doesn't make your, she said this, it doesn't make your problems any smaller than mine. Because you're the one who has to deal with them. And it's hard, life is hard. She just said, just count your blessings. Look to the positive. She was one of the most bravest people. I mean, I know you hear that a lot about people with cancer. She just took it like, hey, it is what it is. She didn't try to sugarcoat it or make it seem like it was nothing. It'll be her, this April 13th will be her third year being 
being gone. And she was a good friend of mine. I've known her since I was seven. She was like two years older than me. She left behind a son and a husband. A son that was only eight years old when he when she passed away. But he's autistic, so it still hurts him, but the way he views things is a little different than, you know, the way he took it and absorbed that and was a lot different than most people, so I'm kind of glad that for his sake that, you know, he was able to handle it better than most people because I messed a lot of people up for her to have passed away. She was such a sweet person. You know, real, real funny. Real funny. It's real hard to make me laugh sometimes. Like some people. Like a belly laugh. And she just gave me that like belly laugh kind of laugh. That, that wonderful laugh that makes your soul just feel so good. And I miss that. You know, life is hard. You just gotta take the good with the bad, and the bad with the good. Look up. Try not to look down, because look, if you're on a tightrope, right. And you I think of life like this. If you're on a tightrope and it's between two lo two tall towers, are you gonna look down? You may be tempted to look down at the trouble be below you and death that awaits you. Certain death. You know, you're that tight wire on that rope is is um, taught to. Two buildings say, are you going to try your hardest to look directly in front of you? You have to focus on the positive things. You got to make it to the other side and not let things distract you. If you look down, all the problems you're not going to be able to focus and you're going to fall into depression. It's good to look up, but see, you're dreaming. And when you look up, those things cannot be, those things can mess you up because you're just daydreaming of what could have, what should have. But if you look straight ahead, you're having to face the problems right there. You have to, you're having to face the issue at hand. And the goal is to go across and make it to the other side. So your goal is to make it through without distraction. It can be done. People do it. I think of life that way. All oh, you do. Life is has more meaning and more purpose. Cause let's say that you got cancer today. Let's say that the doctor told you, "Will will everything? What will matter then?" What would matter in your life? Your family the people most close to you. You want to spend as much time with them as possible. Do it now though. Don't wait until something bad happens. Do it now. Now is the time to do everything that you want to do. And if you can't do everything, do a little bit of what you want. 
We don't wallow, wallow in misery and self-pity and sadness. Life's too short for that. Get up. Get busy. Do something. Do something fun. For me, it's my artwork. For me, it's doing things for people. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. I'm always making mistakes. But I learn from those things and I keep going. I'm, I don't say to myself, oh, I'm so stupid. I don't say that. I say I did a stupid thing. I never said I am stupid or I am ugly. And even though, oh, wait, I don't look in the mirror and say, I used to do this, but I don't do this anymore. I don't say, you're so fat, you're so ugly. No, I say, you're overweight, yes. You have weight, a weight problem. But you ain't ugly. <laughs> and if anybody but ever said that to me, would I really want to be their friend anyway? What kind of person would say something like that? I'm not a nice person. Not anybody I would want to hang around with, so it really doesn't matter, does it? I'm a married woman with a husband that loves me. And even if I wasn't married with a husband who loves me, it still wouldn't matter because I would know who I am. You have to find out who you are. And who you are is a beautiful person who's just a human being who makes mistakes like everybody else. And if anybody tells you that you're ugly, that you're this, that you're that, who are they to tell you those things? They're just words. Yes, words can hurt and leave a scar. But you can heal that scar by applying the knowledge of yourself. Thinking about all the good that you are. And you have good in you. So, if you're stuck in a in a hole you use the dirt in that hole to dig yourself out of there and get out of there as quickly as you can go for a run if you can't go for a run go for a walk if you can't go for a walk count if your legs don't work use your hands if your hands don't work Use your eyes. If your eyes don't work, use your mouth. Do something. Do something that makes you happy. Life is too short, people. Life is too short, kittens. Anyhow. Me and my water. We're going to go ahead and start this day. I hope you enjoy this little video chat. Helps me reflect. It's good to like have a time to reflect on your problems. And your issues. And just things. Life ain't so bad. Look. If you're having a bad day. Go get your nails done. For guys, if you're having a bad day, do something good for yourself. Go get a pedicure. Heck, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing wrong about a guy going and getting a pedicure. There is nothing wrong with that. Or getting a manicure. Getting a, a wax job on your eyebrows. Doing something. Something good for yourself. Get yourself a haircut. Look good. Go for a walk. Take your dog for a walk. He wants to go. She wants to go. Give your give a kid a hug. That's why I love little kids and elderly people because little kids play. They haven't learned yet. You know, like gossiping, gossiping. And the elderly just want to tell you stories about their life. About their life, though. They don't gossip or nothing like that. El the elderly, I'm talking about people like in the nursing homes and stuff. 
They want to tell you about their adventures of their life. People in between them, I have a hard time with them because they want to gossip and talk about things. To me, gossiping hurts my head. I don't, I don't, I just stay quiet if I'm around, if I can't get away from it. I just stay quiet. I don't say anything. Do something good for people. For, for, you know, help people out. Give a hug. Give a smile to a stranger. Do something. And you'll see your life transform into positivity. Slowly, every day. Make a list of some things that you want to do for yourself and for people. And you'll see your your whole life and your mind, everything, just transform itself. You won't have time to see negative because your whole life will be positive. You'll have some negativity there. You'll have some sadness, but the positivity will be overflowing. You'll be happy. So... Thank you for visiting my channel. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it gave you some nice relaxation. Even some sleep and deep rest. So I know I was talking a lot in this one. I just thought that this would be a nice little video to chat. My next video will be something more like some more in packaging. I'll do another one of these um, popping videos like bubble popping but I want to get the big chew gum. I don't really care for this one. Just bubble, double bubble or whatever. I don't know why. Somebody told me that the big chew gum or something like that it's good for popping bubbles and stuff. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, please. And uh, a comment below. Also, uh, if you're not a kitten, subscribe, become a kitten. I love all my little kittens. Y'all are all so special to me. Also, click the bell for more videos to come. So thank you for visiting me. And I wish you the best day and the best weeks ahead. So thank you and ciao.